Hello, friends. Welcome to the Mostly Yoga podcast.、Uh, it's been a quite a while since I popped out the last episode. Uh, uh, nothing new, right? I I take very long to create these things, but I've been busy the past couple of months. Busy with some personal stuff. A lot has been happening that needed my attention, so I was occupied. Uh, but uh, a、hey, construction as always. Uh, but. I think things are a little bit more settled now.、Uh, things are running on its own, so I'm falling into my routine again. Have some time, so I'm here. Found some inspiration to get back into this. I recorded this 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 episode、uh, maybe like two months ago, two maybe even three months ago. Long time, ah.、Uh. Uh, but like I said, I, uh, certain things uh, needed my attention, so. Now that it's settled, here we are.、Uh, my guest today is Macy Chong, who happens to be the 大姐 of my good friend Mei Yan, which was how I got to know of her and of what she does. Uh, so, so in this episode, I I learned a little bit more about. I learned a little bit more about what the anagram system is, and it's something that Maisie uses as a tool for helping people to understand themselves and to understand the people around them, which in turn allows people to communicate a little bit better, to build a more authentic convers connect, <laughs> build a more authentic connection with with again. Themselves and the people around them, and、uh, I think it was just very interesting to see, or rather to explore this in with more depth.、Um, my idea of it was very surface level, very like you know you just do the quiz online and you just see what number you are. Like,、oh, okay, I guess I'm this like very, very Myers Briggs, but there's actually more to to unpack, which again. She does a very good job at elaborating on it. Woof woof. Uh, yeah. Uh, la la la. We'll just start with that. Um, no need to have a long-winded introduction. But if you happen to be a long-time listener and you like what you hear, do go to coffee dot com slash mostly yoga to show your support. If you decide to donate, thank you very much in advance. And if you don't, it's okay.、Uh, you can still listen to this for free, and I'm happy to keep on making these episodes. I love to talk to people, and I love to listen and learn from all these interesting people who I have on, and I'll continue to do it forever and ever. Okay, so without further ado, here's my guest, Maisie. Hope you enjoy it. Should I be a bit louder? Uh, can. Hmm. Can. I mean, it's it's fine lah. As long as like, it sounds fine, so it's okay. Okay, I'm ready. Also, how do I pronounce your name? Maisie. Maisie. Like Daisy. May okay. It's a Z sound. Maisie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Heard many things about you. Oh, I feel like okay. Wait, Kaishala. All right. Okay, like I was saying, I've heard many things about you、mm -hmm. from my time, well, from my relationship with me, and I've met your brother, I've met your mother, I've met your father, but I've never met you, right? I have heard about you. Okay, you're the one that lives here at the corner house. Once in a while,、I'll、hear things about like whatever, but very superficial. Oh, I'm gonna meet my sister. She does this or whatever. I remember that you were a teacher back then,、mm -hmm. and then I think recently, I was chatting with Mayan about some stuff. Then she, not not recently lah, maybe like a couple of back when she was doing a TT. Then she said that you went down to to whole space, right? I was like, what? What are you, what are、mm -hmm. you doing? Like, what's what, what, what? Like, what's what's the 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 context?、Mm -hmm. Then she said that you were involved in. 
life coaching. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one thing led to another, and then here we are, mm-hmm. right? And I also happened to meet uh, Cass for lunch a couple of days, a couple of a week ago, and I was like, hey, you know, me and sister, right? Like, did she have? Then she she did a thing with you before, mm-hmm. so I was like, hey, what should I ask her? Like, because it's been a while since I've had an episode with someone that I need to dissect a bit. Because mm. previously it's always been my friend, so it's easy. You know, you think so much, just like, hey, what are you doing? Mm. So for you today, a little bit more curated, because there are things that I want to know, and I also don't know a lot about this subject. So sure. I try my best. Sure, that's oh. as great an attitude as you can bring. Yeah, open mind, open heart. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about? how you even discovered this and maybe just a brief int- introduction about anagrams that's how you pronounce it right anagram it's more of like enneagram Enne- you see I need to refine it <laughs> enneagram okay. because there's another word anagram which means something different it's like a short form for it's like where you use uh, the the first letter of all words to create some ah kind of, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. but the, the the sort of values profiler that's the enneagram Enneagram, get yeah, the right guys. Nice. Okay. Okay, so I mean, first it's nice to meet you, Aaron. It's also our first meeting face to face. Nice space, lovely space. I always oh, like coming to people's house. Thanks. And I find it so interesting that you've met everybody in my family already except me, but mm. that should, that actually can be the first thing to know about me is that I tend to keep to myself quite a bit and I may not be the most. Um, socially out there and so usually the last family member to meet mm. might be me mm. yeah because they are likely to meet me in my own space which is what you're doing here today yeah so for for the people who don't know me i'm Maisie. i'm also the sister of aaron's uh, good friend <laughs> mayan and that's how we are connected um i i am a human connection advocate so i i coach in it i speak on it i train in it and Essentially, human connection, I would say, is quite a new term in our society or maybe even just in the Asian context, but it essentially is about human relationships. Mm. How we human, how we interact with humans, how we understand humans. Um, And this human connection includes connection to yourself. So like the act or the study or the commitment to understand yourself, understand another human and sort of look at how you can intentionally build deep and connected relationships that you want. The kind of relationships that you don't have to run away from, the kind of relationships that you feel safe. Um, people may, may have always wondered, is there a manual to this? And, and I guess, yes, there is in the study of human connection. It's about understanding how I can interact with people who are different from me. And in a way, that's where my work with the Enneagram comes in. I am not... Um, or at least I do not identify as an Enneagram coach because I, I like the bigger, broader label of it in terms of human connection. Mm. Enneagram is a, is a hard profiling tool that helps me to get some data to talk about human connection because Enneagram looks at what each human values. And when you look at what each person values, right, that is really getting down to the essential part of what is human. That's a very nice explanation, eh? I like it. Mm. Wait, your neighbor who like that? Sorry? <laughs> you never come back already. Oh, I think so. I think I hear someone. Um, I think that everybody in a in their own way is finding themselves, mm. ma. It is a journey of self-discovery and this seems to be a very useful tool to be able to find yourself. Mm. And I did some... I mean, I've done the test. I know my number, but it's it's not as simple as like, uh, what's that thing? The Myers Briggs or horoscope. It's not as straightforward. It's a bit more complex because mm. there are levels to it, like like different number, different percentage. So it's a mm. bit more intricate. I still don't really understand it. I just oh, I know my my number is this. Then okay lah. That's mm. that's like my very surface level. Um, so you were saying that this is a tool to help with understanding yourself which in turn help you understand others because mm-hmm. to know others is to know yourself yes 
how? Hmm. Actually, let's look at that statement. To know others, you have to know yourself. That that's not necessary, but it's more of like if you have the lenses with which to understand yourself, you will then naturally have that disposition and the tendency to want to understand others as well. So the foundation upon which Enneagram functions is that it looks at what you value most as a human and what is your most positive intention when you do the things you do and when you say the things you say. So let's say if I know what my greatest positive intention is, then chances are when I interact with other people and I see their superficial level behavior, I will also pause to think what their most positive intention is. And that is the value that that Enneagram can bring because it encourages you to look at the why level of a person, why they do the things instead of what they do. We tend to get upset when we look at what people do and we judge them in a way because we assume that they are doing this intentionally. Mm. But chances are you haven't even dug at their deeper why level yet. But when we can connect at the why level, that's mm. when we can really see a human being at the most essential level and that's where that's the door to compassion mm -hmm. that is the entry point to compassion at the why level so the anagram in a nutshell it targets that why level the root of things are uh, right the mm. reason the reason behind everything law like there's a lot of things that people do that they do for the sake of doing without knowing why they do it but if you are very sure of the reason why you're doing something, then it becomes more authentic, it becomes a bit more genuine. And Yala, I guess it's interesting like you do want to find out why. Um how has like how has this helped like say if you were to look at all your uh what do you call those people? Your your clients, your patients, your students, clients, clients coaches, co yeah, humans, like yeah. those, those your, your, your students, <laughs> the humans right? who work with me, yeah, the people yeah. that work with you. When they discover how Enneagram mm. has helped them, what are some examples of these stories? Like, mm. say, someone comes to you and say, like, I have trouble connecting to my parents or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you help them through this process. And how, what's the result of that? Mm. The Enneagram, like, I think without fail, the people who do it, they always come out saying that they feel very seen. Mm. And they feel very seen by an inanimate profile in a way. Because mm. the profile is saying like, hey, I understand you and why you do the things you do. Mm. And you're not broken anywhere. Mm. And you're not wrong in doing the things you do. And I understand that you do that because you care about this. That's all, you, because you care about this. And it is a very compassionate thing for someone to hear, for anyone to hear, mm. that I am not doing these things because I'm screwed up somewhere or because I am a mean, bad person or because I'm not good enough. It's just because I value this. And that is like a reframe in a way it is already literally a very neat reframe that the anagram gives to you it says let's say you are this number you value peace and harmony mm. or like let's say they give you this number it say you value good relationships and you mm. care about wanting to be appreciated things like that rather than maybe some of our self-judgment that says oh i'm so superficial and i'm so vain why do i always want people to see what i do and say thank you or things like that I see. It's sort of like your love language, that kind, and what applies to you, right? Probably not love language, but definitely there will be things that each number likes to hear. Oh. Yeah, in a way. But, but rather than... Because love language sort of looks at maybe how you feel love and how you receive love, Enneagram is more of like why you function the way you do and how you've been conditioned in a way. Mm. So when people understand that, then they sort of can understand that people sometimes present bad behavior ultimately also because they care for something. And mm. when you care for something, maybe you're scared of something. And when you're scared of something, maybe it's because you want something in particular. And these are just 
people sometimes behaving in a certain way because they are hurt and they are suffering in their own ways. So Enneagram sort of looks at that. So when when I work with the humans who come to me, um, it is just that realization and that permission to say that it's because I care about this. Mm. That sometimes can give them a lot of redemption, a lot of relief from maybe self-criticism that they've been going through. Yep. So I mean, I've had a client who who has who worked with me and who has a deep shame in their body regarding the person that they are and who they are and a general feeling that they're not good enough. Hmm. But this person's um, Enneagram number values uniqueness and authenticity. And so it is just about reframing that narrative to say that it's not that there's something wrong with you, it's that you are unique. That's your value and that's what you actually want to be. So the next time you feel like there's something wrong with you, change that narrative to no, I am unique mm. and I care about being unique. There is nothing wrong with me just because I'm not the same as everybody else. Mm. Deep stuff. Yes. Interesting. Uh, I had a thought and it slipped. You can catch it later. Let me try and find it. It was about something that she said. Uh, she she wanted to feel. What's the word that you use? Unique. Mm. She wanted to feel. She wanted to. Authentic. Oh, uh, oh my God, I lost it again. <laughs> well, story of my life, and <laughs> I, w- I was hearing it. I was like, "Ooh, I want to ask this question." Go on. Oh. Something about. Okay, never mind. I would love to hear it. I would love to hear it when you catch it later. Yes. Okay, I'll try to remember it. Mm. Um, so if, let's say, there are tw- nine, uh, 12, nine, nine of these characteristics, each one of them have a different... Uh, value, value different. positive intention. And everybody is, w- in some way... C- associated with one of these numbers higher or lower Mm -hmm. and by finding out which number is your dominant number Mm -hmm. it gives you an idea of the why the reason why you are or why you do the things you do Mm -hmm. in a in a general sense before diving a little bit deeper because of the different numbers numbers that's great that's a nice summary (laughs) Mm, i feel that john so Let's say my number is whatever, arbitrary number. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is there any conflicts between the numbers? Mm -hmm. Or is it just a matter of like understanding how to... how to uh, connect with different numbers or... The letter, more like. Yeah, so the letter is is the work essentially that my studies center around Mm. because that is the... That is the process of human connection. You have to facilitate that. Mm. So when, I mean, so what I do for those is that I do individual Enneagram profiling sessions where I work with just one person, Mm. but I also do with couples. Right. Mm. It makes sense to, because if your goal is to uh, help uh, people connect, you Mm kind of need the other person also. Then like, okay, this is you. And that's you, that's why, or this is why. And you draw the dots together. That would definitely help. But it's, it's not necessary in that sense. Like a lot of work can start with just one person. Mm. But definitely if, let's say, there's a specific relationship that you're thinking about, mm. it's nice to bring your partner here so that you are both present in the experience together and you make connections together So based yeah. on what people say. So I, I personally really love couple profilings mm. because... I love to facilitate the conversations live and I like to see the connections happen mm. live. When they like realize, oh, this is why you've been doing it or this is why I haven't been understanding you in that way. Exactly. Yeah. So essentially what happens in a couple profiling is that they each have their individual reports and this is like a solid 18-page report. So they each have their reports that sort of go through their strengths, mm. their what their stress states are and what the session looks like is that one person goes through one segment of the report and 
the partner goes through that each same segment. They're reading each other? No, as in own. I facilitate ah. it. So that means I bring partner A through one part and then I bring partner B through the same part. Mm. So the value for the two humans who are in this session is twofold in a way. They get understanding from me when I facilitate the session with them, but they also learn a lot of things when they hear their partner speak. Right. And that is the more precious part, I feel. Even though I'm the facilitator, I feel that the more precious part is that two humans now, they have an opportunity to sit here in a platform, in a space, to listen to each mm-hmm. other. And that's the purpose, actually, of the Enneagram, because it's not just about information. It's mm. only useful if you listen and you're willing to listen to somebody else's why. Mm. Then that's when connection can start to occur. And understanding that my stories are not your stories. Because a lot of people function thinking that the world operates according to their own lenses mm. and their own stories. How can this be? Why would they do something like that? These are very common statements that showcase our assumption that the world runs on our values and our lens but the Enneagram encourages us to maybe just stop and think okay I really don't get why that person did that but I wonder what was important to that Mm. person that they had to do this so in a way when they hear their partner speak in a profiling session they will realize that oh these are the inner thoughts when the partner says like actually I feel stressed when this happens and my thought that is internal is that I think I'm not good enough. And the the best parts for me always are when the partner says like, I didn't know you were thinking that. Mm. And that's not true. I've never thought that of you. Yeah, so then that's when people really get vulnerable because they will reveal their stories. And at the start, you can see it's always a bit stiff. Asians, especially mm. Singaporeans, not comfortable talking about feelings or just airing laundry mm. in the public. So they will get, you know, a bit stiff at first. But after a while with the right questions, with facilitation, it helps that a third party facilitates. Yeah. Yeah, because then a bit of that stress is off. It's sort of like, I'm just answering. I'm. It's not I'm making you answer something. Yeah, or, there's, yeah. A, there's a... There's a there's buffer. A person, yes. Mm. So then that helps people open up and they say like, you know, when this happens for me, I feel as if you really hate me and you judge me. And, and then it allows an opportunity for the partner to come in and correct that yeah. story. And when our stories get corrected, when they get verified, then you know... The truth is revealed, uh, mm. right? So then your misconception of the situation is no longer true. If you, say, did this and then the other person reacted in a particular way that didn't sit right with you, then you get resentful or whatever. Yes. But that, that person has no idea of it. He's just mm-hmm. being himself or he's just being a whatever number does whatever the number. Mm-hmm. And then you being your own number will react in that way because you're not being fulfilled. It's uh, Your needs are not being fulfilled. In it. And then once you draw that, connect that dot, and then ultimately people are not trying to hurt you. you know? yes. They're just doing what they need to do. Yes. That is a very important realisation. Yeah. That because, people are not trying yeah, to hurt you. No one's trying to, no, nothing, I think I've come to realise this also as an older, like as I get older, mm-hmm. that nothing is personal. Yes. Like if people girlfriend break up you boyfriend break up you it's nothing yes. personal it's just yes. that you know they needed something maybe you weren't the right person and they need to find someone else to fulfill that or it's just they are going through something that maybe they're trying to uh, do it on their own they don't want to involve you they're trying to save you from it or mm-hmm. save you from themselves it's very complicated but mm-hmm. it's also ultimately they think that they're doing right mm-hmm. by doing this and then you're like oh you left me blah blah Mm-hmm. or if just someone bumps into you on the street if you use a very simple concept someone bumps into you yep. you think oh that guy is an asshole but you he's just in a hurry you know you don't know ma. Yes. with all the things that are happening in the world the, the so many things right mm-hmm. everybody have their own thinking different energies the wind blow here the wind blow there with all the different things that are happening your understanding of the world is so limited because of our lack of creativity but we only know what we know mm-hmm so we live our life, and if we live our lives in a certain way, we only understand it by our lens. Mm-hmm. But then, if we take the time to broaden things, like oh, broaden our perspective a little bit to see truly what's happening, then we can see- seek the truth, ma. We can yeah. really see and understand what's happening. 
but it's very rare that people mm-hmm. can sit down and like hey tell me what's going on and he reacted this way because fuck, 10 years ago his father did this to mm-hmm. him and there's some childhood trauma that oh it makes sense now and I baptize and I finally understand but also no way got people have time to like stop the guy that bumped into them and tell me what, why, why are you going to bump into me mm. you know so much good stuff that you just talked about I want to like highlight keywords <laughs> that I want to touch on like the first was about I think judgment let's use the word judgment mm. as an anchor to that thought and then lenses mm. I really want to talk about lenses and then last intention Let's okay. see if I can remember the thoughts anchored to those. So the, the first one that you brought up regarding judgment, what you said when somebody bumps you on the street yes. and you just sort of like think, hey, you know, why did he do that to me? That that essentially is one way that we interact with the world sometimes when we judge very easily. Mm. And in a way, we are not... we. We will think that, oh, this person is a jerk for bumping into me. But let's say if I bump into somebody else, mm. I'm able to explain, oh, you know, mm. I didn't mean to do that. I was really in a rush. So I know that that's not me. I'm not a jerk. Mm. So this essentially is called, it's a kind of cognitive bias called fundamental attribution error, mm. where you sort of look at yourself with all of your context. Mm. And so you understand yourself. Yeah. I'm not usually like that. It's just that I was in a rush. That's why I accidentally bumped into him. But when somebody does that to us, we don't go into this state. Interesting. Yeah, we don't go into this state and we just attribute whatever we saw to their character while Mm. we attributed whatever we did to our context to give us understanding in a way. So so that we, we, you know, we don't judge ourselves in that instant. Yeah. We judge ourselves in other ways. But in this case... This sort of explains sometimes why we get triggered by other people's behavior, even when we do the same thing. Mm. Yeah. So this this um, fundamental attribution error it can be, it can be sort of accompanied by that intention to just think and pause when something happens. Like, okay, what situation might that person have been in mm. to behave this way? If I were to assume that this person did not intentionally harm me what could be a possible explanation Mm. and it's just this mind habit to do this that can help us lead a very different reality Mm. as opposed to the one where we assume everybody is out to get us yeah so of course this kind of thinking people might write off sometimes as naive why do you always see the good in other people then you let people walk all over you these are very common things Mm. that people who do this will hear but the thing is it's not about letting else letting someone else win or letting someone else walk over you it's more of this is the choice i want to make for my body Mm. myself i don't want to hold anger or just have this kind of negative resentment in me i would rather be understanding and understanding being understanding is not being weak it's actually being more intentional with what i want to surround myself with and what emotions i want to house in my body so I think that's a very important um, concept for people to also hold space for. Mm. Instead of holding on to the old story of being kind means people eat you in this world. Mm. That kind of survival perspective. Yeah. The second the second word was lens. Mm. Lens is a very is a very great word to use in relation with the Enneagram as well, because essentially the Enneagram shows you what lenses you are wearing as a human being so let's say i say oh aaron from this test it looks like you have blue lenses so what do you do with that information it's not like you go around everywhere telling people that oh i have a blue lens so if i cannot see this color don't blame me it's because i have a blue lens Mm. that's not the purpose of the enneagram it doesn't give you an excuse yes excellent like that's a great word it doesn't give you like an excuse or justification to not change your behavior Mm. or not understand yeah so in a way it's more of like Aaron, you have blue lenses so in situations where this color appears just take note that you might not see that color Mm. because of your blue lenses so in a way just now when you said like it helps you broaden your perspectives it's true, but you don't even have to go there in order to experience the benefit of mm. the Enneagram. You just need to know that your lens is not the only lens in the world. Just that understanding is enough for mm. you to start allowing compassion to yeah. enter your space. I don't need to know that, oh, type 1 values this, type 2 values this, and you know, so on and so forth. I just need to know that, okay, I am just one type. Mm. 
and there are other types mm. and that can already change a lot of the way you interact with people and yeah and and I think the last word intention was more about going into all these kinds of interactions with intention many people might say wow you mean every time something happens you have to think about what circumstance that person was what situation it is in I mean why should I do that it takes up so much time you know why can't people just be direct and say what they want and say what they mean to it's I understand that frustration but I also think of it as human relationships are something that require work and if you don't put in that work and that intention then it's just that the outcome may not be the one that you wish for you just have to settle with that mm. because you work hard at your job and you work hard for maybe some things you care for and it's just the understanding that relationships require that same kind of commitment and work mm. which I think is why sometimes people also they are obsessed with the question of finding the one because it's that idea from no such thing yeah is the idea from media that if you find the one, then love will be easy. Mm-hmm. There is no work, but that's not true. Even the best love, in a way, it requires work. Mm. That's why it is love. I don't think I don't consider love as like a, love is hard. Yes, love it's is not easy. Love you is the hardest yeah. thing I've had to do. People think that they fall in love. The concept of falling, mm-hmm. accident. Whoops, I mm-hmm. fell into it. Can't mm-hmm. help it. But I think if you truly un- love someone it takes work it takes effort to build mm. something to work on things to have uncomfortable conversations to be revealing and to be vulnerable yes to all otherwise it's all it's like lust right mm. lust is very easy oh hey, okay, that person looks attractive so I like that person mm-hmm. but you are um, it's an illusion mm-hmm. you know your body's playing tricks on you your mind is playing tricks on you exactly <laughs> love is hard love is love, a mother's love a father's love Yes. Those are hard things, you know. Very hard. Very hard things, but it's in good intention, yes. in a sense, right? Yes. But it, they, they want, they, they expect more from you. If mm-hmm. if you love someone, you expect more from them. Right? That's why they will scold you if you do something stupid, or if they if you behave in a bad way, mm-hmm. you get punished for it. Well, your mother will scold you, your father will scold you. Of course, because you're acting in bad, in bad taste. If you say your partner, you cheat or you cheat or you lie or lie to them, might be a small things. Yeah, I did the dishes, but then you didn't. Mm. But then like I come back and I make a whole big deal about it. It's not the the point. wasn't the dishes. The point was that you lied to me. It's all these small small things that you need to, like you know, you, it's a responsibility. Mm-hmm. You need to be, um, someone worthy of that love. So many layers again. <laughs> yeah, but, but some of the relationships that come to me that are most fraught is really parent-child relationships. The, the mother the, and the father. Yeah, or the adults come to me saying that they have injured relations with mm. their parents and things like that. And and what you said just now, like parents scolding in a way because they have expectations. These are additional variables that make the love equation tricky mm. it's because when I have obligations in a way they can be seen as unfair by the other person because it's not a contract that was mutually consenting right. yeah. you created the obligations on your own and to me they are really like pressures mm. and a lot of parents they they tend to speak in ways that they do not intend or they are not aligned with their intentions of love so it comes out differently because also of the hurt and the that trauma that the parents there. yeah but elaborate on about this like what did you what do you mean by they are saying it but they're not um mm-hmm. yeah. so for example the asian dictionary of love <coughs> asian dictionary of love is that if let's say Listen my intention is i love you or i'm worried about you it comes off as why do you do that? Mm-hmm. I told you already not mm-hmm. to do that. You must have a good job. Then you can have money and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, if let's say my intention is, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. Then what comes out can be, I didn't want to do that. Okay, you make me say oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> right? So that's why there is a lot of hurt and trauma mm. in parent-child relationships because that's where you, that's where we're touching the topic of like intergenerational intergenerational trauma okay, okay. 
yeah so where parents they they can only parent the way maybe they have been parented or they also have had scars that their own parents haven't processed with them mm-hmm. and so sometimes they emotionally vent on their children mm-hmm. and this is not even entering like anagram knowledge yet but it's when people we, are, yeah. Right? yeah it's people being people yes and, and that's the thing like can we hold space for how different people are I think that mm. is the ultimate humility. Can I hold space? Have compassion. Yes. And can I hold space that I don't know you and that you know yourself best mm. and that I cannot speak for you and that even if, let's say, we're married, I cannot assume to know everything that matters to you and I must continually find out. Mm. Yeah. So th- this is something that I call the love maps and also love researchers and scientists, they call love maps like... Do you have love maps with the five most important people in your life? Do you know like what matters to them? Why they did something like this? Or you know what they did yesterday? What's going on in their lives? This is how we sort of invest in our relationship in little, small, mundane ways every day. Creating these love maps for each other. Interesting. And again, this is just the study of humans. Mm. Whether it's, whether it's like the anagram, whether it's human nature, whether it's, uh, generational trauma, all this encompasses. It's just a matter of like, people being people, mm. and. I like what you said about uh, having compassion for, everybody because to have compassion to others means to have compassion to yourself, uh, mm-hmm. because the words that you say to yourself also it matters, mm-hmm. right? The narrative. Exactly. So if I can change the narrative of someone that bumped into me. Okay, maybe he's just late. He didn't know. He's not a bad person. Mm. So then, when I do something, I can have that same conversation in my mind. It's okay. I I I made a mistake. It's okay. You're not you're not a bad person for doing that, right? Exactly, Aaron. Because it's how you see the world. What if you see the world as a terrible place? And everything that you do, everything that happens to you is a terrible thing. Mm-hmm. Every if you're a hammer, everything is a nail, right? Mm-hmm. And then when we think of say a topic of understanding humans connection if I go even deeper or if I go even broader right Mm. and if I ask you what's the meaning of life a very paradoxical question some may say there is no meaning some may say that the meaning is whatever you decide it to be all true right Mm -hmm. like all great questions they have no answers Mm. but also another answer could be connection right Mm -hmm. say when you think about all the uh happiest moments in your life when you think of uh like like uh oh the best moments in your life it's often moments where not like oh i won the lottery or i had a great time in disneyland it's often i managed to see the birth of my child or i had a really good chat with my friend i caught up my old friend and all those moments right often free Mm -hmm. they are not um, you don't have to pay for it it just comes right and oftentimes it's moments with people mm. so then it is connecting with that person whether you fell in love whether you had that chat with your friend or whether you were watching the sunset with your brother or whatever mm. all these moments are free and all these moments are in some way you're connecting with the people so then a meaning of life because life has many meanings and no meaning could be just seeking connection or understanding that connection. So every time when you, you were saying like how when you were talking to the couple and then they realize like, oh, I didn't know that you felt that way. That's a moment that they will remember for a long time, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure. And even you remembered it, what? Mm-hmm. So moments like that where we can sense it, we seek it because it's valuable. It's priceless. I mean, another reason why I like to do this podcast is also to have an opportunity to connect with someone uh, on a mm-hmm. deeper level, on a, look, there's no one here. It's a very intimate one, right? It's a very mm. intimate space and we're revealing certain things to each other which is very intimate also. And this kind of thing can't can buy on what? Mm. But yet, it's also very valuable. Mm. So You're it's nice. entirely yeah, right. It, it's nice that you are pursuing such a path mm-hmm. of, of connection and understanding that. Mm. Mm. And, and for me, I think I am on this path because I find that connection drives me a lot as well Mm -hmm. i enjoy listening to people's stories and 
in a way, things that I have learned about myself through Enneagram and through this study that, I mean, this area of work called authentic relating, I, I consider that very similar to studies regarding human connection. Because right now, there it's is... Like psychology. Yeah, yeah, there still isn't any kind of, you know... Mm-hmm degree out there called human connection but there is this field called authentic relating and that is about how you can relate authentically to humans mm. which is about as close like uh, you I can like get yeah to, to human connection and it it gives you practices to be present with somebody to welcome whatever is essential in a person into the space between you and how you can be there fully for somebody without your own stories and understanding that your stories are yours and their stories are theirs, this is a very humbling practice. So I'm, I'm, credit. I mean, I'm uh, certified in this study as well, and I learned a lot in this study, like about me as a person, and how I connect with other people. So my experience of connection is that for many years in my life, I would say, you know, in into my mid thirties. I thought connection was peace and that if I have peace with somebody else, I have connected with them. Mm. In other sense, if I don't have any quarrels with them, if I don't have any conflict with them, this is the deepest connection I can have with a person. That was my assumption and that was my story. And so in wanting to connect with people, I harmonized with them. Mm. Whatever they wanted, I supported Whatever I sense made them uncomfortable, I kept in. And doing that, I may have honoured, I think, a lot of people around me. But you disconnect from yourself. Mm, I didn't honour myself. And I think this is a very common story with conflict that many Asians have. I can say many Singaporeans Mm. have. Cultural. uh. Yeah, they don't (laughs) think that there's a problem if there are no quarrels or if there's no conflict. So that's one. And they actively work to keep no conflict so that there is connection in their way. I can relate to this. I feel like a lot of people can relate to this, but comfortable, uh, uncomfortable silence is always worse than, than, than open, what's that, that quote? Something about uncomfortable silence mm-hmm. is always worse than uncomfortable conversations or something like that point being it's easier it's harder to feel comfortably silent than to to open the door and start to to discuss certain things uncomfortably yeah it's a it's it's something that I've realised also I mean obviously because I was an example and also because I think a lot of us just had narratives growing up Mm. to don't fight Mm -hmm. it's nice to be kind you know and also don't talk about uncomfortable things okay you know don't talk here we, we, this kind of thing we talk later away from people so there isn't witness to our tough moments there there isn't a practice of witnessing our tough moments so a lot of us tend to keep our tough moments to ourselves. and i can only speak for myself here i kept a lot of my tough moments to myself and then when you do that you can end up telling yourself the story that nobody cares about me and that nobody is seeing that I'm suffering. And then you do your own thing where maybe you keep other people out. And it becomes a vicious cycle. So for, for 35 years of my life, I consider myself a pretty intelligent individual. But these 35 years, I never even once noticed that I had never really shared my troubles with my family. And I thought, I mean, I have a really good relationship with them. I really love my family. And I'm really close with them. But I realized when I did this work that I had mostly been present as a listener. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't been listened to. And in a way, when you don't get listened to, other people don't see your essence. You may see other people's essence, but other people don't see your essence and they don't get to connect with you. Mm And so, in a way, I was the one keeping up my family in that sense. If I don't share the most vulnerable parts of me, I always thought I had to solve it on my own. Mm. And and that was one of the most liberating experiences I ever had when I just sat down with Mian one day and I 
told her all my uncomfortable feelings. And from then on, it became a practice. Like, she will make sure to check in. Is there anything you want to tell me? And if there was, I would tell her. And and I thought we were already very close. But having this practice gave a more tender, gave a bigger, a deeper tenderness to our relationship. Like, I know she sees me in my essence and she allows me to see her in her vulnerabilities too. Yep. So it can be so revealing to have these uncomfortable conversations and they are not, they don't have to be threatening. A lot of people say, no, no, I, what do you mean I need to have conflict in my relationship? I don't want, and I understand why they say that because their stories of conflict is maybe fierce, angry, negative. It's not connecting but to me now, conflict is very connecting. I have a tenderness towards it. Like, I feel it is my friend that I have not met for many years. I feel a tenderness towards it as a past conflict avoidant. I see it now as a bridge that always connects me and somebody else with my spouse, with my family members. And essentially conflict happens because two people come together with things that they really care about and those things are different that's all that's why conflict happens there's nothing bad so far in what i described it's just two people caring about different things so then conflict conversations are then just conversations where we talk about the different things that we care about and how we can support each other that's all that is the story people should have about conflict there's nothing negative in there I agree. I feel like, like I said, I enjoy, no, no I wouldn't say enjoy. I welcome uncomfortable conversations. Mm. <clears throat> if they re- if they result, <clears throat> if they result in conflict, then I feel like I'm able to manage it. Because again, I'm not, we're not here to fight. We're just here to understand. Mm. And you don't have to raise your voice to be heard. If In fact, that's the worst way to be, to be heard, right? But there are things that we don't know. We have to assume that there's a world outside of us that we have no idea of. And if you took the time, and if you're patient and you're empathetic enough to hear, you can understand. You can always sympathize. One, if you read it, like if I go to an extreme, you can you can even sympathize with Hitler. You know that kind of thing mm, because mm. everybody thinks that they're doing the right thing, but that doesn't mean that that they are doing good. Mm-hmm. But you can then, if you know, if somebody was able to. To, to share all that and you can decide for yourself or even if you think that you are right and then you share mm-hmm. and then someone else or changes your perspective then you can think wait a minute I think my idea is not not correct or no, no. it it's, uh, doesn't serve me mm-hmm. then you can change it because you have the right to change mm-hmm. whatever your thinking is ma. so then if anything you gain from that conflict mm-hmm. right you didn't lose yes yeah in fact after conflict you always gain i feel yeah, and you gain it's, inside you yes can... and what you said just now you gain understanding mm. so actually conflict has a goal and that goal is mutual understanding mm. it's not victory and loss and you know yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that yeah. it's the ego right yes. it's, it's part of the ego so i want to win mm-hmm. so if your purpose of the conflict is to win and not to understand then you are looking at it in a different way Rima. yes and yeah. you will realize it is not your agenda when let's say the other person gives in and say, it's okay, you're right, you, yeah, win. You're right you win. Then you notice the feeling in yeah, you. you. If it's not happiness, yeah. right, then that was not your objective. Yeah, yeah people, people are mistaken about this. Like, they think that they want to win, but actually, if I give you the win, but I don't show you that I've understood mm. you, you won't be happy. Yeah, that's not the point. <laughs> yes, yeah. but people won't realise that mm. until maybe they experience it. Because then, the, the common trajectory will be like, okay, you win, you're right, you're always right. Okay, mm-hmm. so the argument ends. Mm-hmm. Then the other person will say, no, that's not what the, I wanted. Ah, uh, correct. Yeah. yeah, that's not the point, or you don't understand. Then it goes back to square one. Which is a lack of communication, or you're not able to communicate your true concerns or your, your concepts properly. And I would say it's a lack of listening also. Yeah. yeah. Because to listen is to. Is to it's a form of communication. What right? mm. uh, people think communicating is just talking, mm. but if you talk and talk and talk, but you also never listen, then that's 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 not the point, ma. Mm. It's an art, lah. It is. It's really an art. <laughs> it's it's a it's a very delicate way of doing it. Yeah, but it's also connecting. It is as you and listen, as you talk, and you banter. 
Yes. Yeah, it's just understanding, lor. Slowly, slowly, and then after that, you talk, 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 in one big round, nothing has been concluded because nothing. There was no issue to begin with, ma. You know. Yes, and the thing is that a lot of people think conflict can be resolved with solutions. That means we just need to find a solution, then this conflict will be resolved. Possible, but, right? Mm, yeah. But actually, majority of our conflict issues, they are perpetual. They are perpetual conflict, mm. which means that there will be th- arguments that will come up again and again. And it's not because of your failure or anything. It's just because you care about these things so much. So then these moments will pop up. And it just means that this is the opportunity for continuing discussion, for continuing conversations. Mm. And that tires people. And they think that there must be something wrong if this problem keeps coming up and we keep having to argue about it. But research has shown that majority of our arguments in fact 69% of it it's because of the same issues and they will keep coming up Mm. but it's not a failure point it just means that these things are things that you care that much about and if you think about it it's reasonable it's because I care about it and you care about it and we care about it differently that's why we will always be reminded of how we care about it differently and that's not anything to resent each other for. It's just a reminder for renewed understanding. Okay, then when we forget again, then renewed understanding. If you see it this way, I feel it's a more it's a more humane way to look at conflict and it's also more compassionate also because you don't feel as if you're doing something wrong. Yes. Yeah. As long as you talk about it. Make an effort lah. Mm. Can someone's Enneagram number change? No. So it's... Okay. Mm, it's fixed because it talks about your motivations. So it's but not... your motivations can change what? Your motivations in the sense like your values. So your values actually form from your childhood narratives mm. and the way you were brought up and your conditioning. So the way Enneagram has been created is that it looks very much to that kind of values that you have and belief systems which are very deep. And so it doesn't change as often as, let's say, Maya Briggs, which is mm. more behavioral. Yeah. So all of them, I mean, look at a different different percentage of behavioral and values and things like that. But Myers Briggs, in comparison, mm. would be more behavioral, mm. and that's why Myers Briggs can change. Yeah. Plus you minus. You know. Yeah. I-E. Like let's say you become I, you become E. Mm. These can change, but the Enneagram doesn't change in the sense that your values and the reasons you behave the way you do, they were sort of cemented by a certain age. That's mm. why we can't do them on individuals Younger. who are young. Yeah, We have to do yeah. them maybe like, you know, um, minimum 18 to 21. Like when you're an adult, mm. your values, your your beliefs, they have sort of cemented. You're a bit more sure of yourself at that mm-hmm. age. Uh. Not, not necessarily sure. It's just that you know, internally, you have... Uh, uh, what you yeah, align with Yeah, you have decided what you, what you believe on, yeah. Um, I mean, if I were to give an analogy of that, it's sort of like at two years old, neurologically, all our neural pathways are open. Mm. That's when essentially we hold the most creative potential. Everything is possible, all the neural pathways. From two years old onwards, when life starts happening to us and we start having experiences that teach us certain things, then the pathways close one by Mm. one. And that is how personality, in a very Mm. rough, short manner, how it is sort of (laughs) formed. The childhood narratives that we're told and that conditioner. So Enneagram looks at that conditioning. Wow. Mm. Okay. Yeah, can you imagine how hard it can be to craft questions that find that information? You know, I've done the the test on a few websites. Mm. Sometimes I'm more this, more that, but it's usually the same, bouncing between a few numbers. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would I would be wary about online websites with mm. their tests because those won't be... The words that they use, the yeah. way they structure the questions can be a bit like... I mean, it's the same question but phrased in a different way. Then one I'll say yes, one I'll say no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that they're probably testing for sort of like a... What do you call that? Consistency. Mm. But in, in this case, the language needs to be very specific yeah. because you are getting at something that's very motivational so if the test is not accredited let's say if it's not rigorous in its accuracy then 
chances are it's not going to give a lot of discriminating um, results. Mm. Because let's say if certain numbers are very close for you, then the test may not be able to discriminate. So which is the dominant one? Mm. So that's why, like, in a way, accredited platforms for Enneagram, they are set up, then you see that they are, you know, they are approved by the International Enneagram Association, mm. things like that. If you have these... Um, these benchmarks attached to it and then you get to know that okay these are a bit more trustworthy they have been created or they have been scripted very intentionally then i would say those will be clearer Mm. in a way so that's why i I would recommend like you know proper profile debriefing and that's why somebody bringing you through it brings that value also because most of the time when you read a report online you read it and then you yeah, go really then what yeah. yeah how do i bring this to my life mm. yeah so then that's why the enneagram coach is actually trained to get you to apply it to your life and bring out for you the everyday situations where you see yourself actually showing up this way then you will connect with the information then it will make sense can, can i get an example of like say um Say your number, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an okay. Enneagram type yeah, 9. Yeah, you, I have an Enneagram use your, type 9 profile. Use you as an example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So say your, your number is whatever. Mm-hmm. How does your number affect your everyday life? Mm-hmm. Like, from the small, <laughs> like small things, let's say. Yeah, so many. So, okay, I mean, I, I, did, I did my profile with this, with this platform as well. So in my report, I get three numbers. We get three numbers sort of to give more nuance to our... Yeah understanding also so i have the profile types of a nine four and five so these numbers essentially mean that i value peace and harmony i value authenticity and connection and i value deep mastery and wisdom Mm -hmm. so these are the in in a very brief nutshell the, the positive intentions that these profile types have so what this means for me in my everyday life is that these numbers as a basket they are what you call withdrawing numbers. So there are three categories of these Enneagram numbers that talk about, that sort of reflect how we show up in the world in terms of our energy. And withdrawing essentially means that I just happen to get all three of the numbers where my energy is very withdrawn. So I function really internally within myself. I do not need or I'm not dependent on external relationships oh. or I keep a lot of things to myself a lot of my internal world is as good as my real world mm. and so understanding this about myself helps me realize that if I were to stay comfortable at my average health I will not communicate with people and I will be comfortable with that mm. and I will tend to keep a lot of things to myself so this is me at average health mm. so knowing this information then gives me the understanding that in order to be more healthy emotionally, mentally, I need to make an effort to communicate my thoughts. Mm. I need to be more of an external communicator Mm. and that my current communicating pattern is more indirect and more Mm. internal. So just this simple knowledge, it gives me the reminder that, okay, this is me in my comfortable state right now. What am I not saying to my loved ones? And then I will make the extra effort to say. And understanding this also was what led me to my current work in human connection because I am someone who needs to work very intentionally to connect with people because I am very comfortable alone. Yes, but I have I have seen from you know my experiences and my knowledge of these profile types that I actually like connection. I like the outcome of connection, but I am reluctant to go through that process. Yeah, and and what is natural to me is that really I can keep to myself in a space for a whole day just doing my thing, but that's not what will really light me up. So just that information tells me that I have to put a lot of work. So each time. I experience myself holding something in, I just have to make that call, okay, no, say it out. It's just little reminders like that. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Interesting insight. A lot of self-reflection also. Like like say, Mm. what you just said, I can relate to certain things. Like, I can relate to like, like that. 
I can totally understand like okay if you are a particular type that enjoys just being by yourself and this is what you do at your baseline doing what you're doing you're fine but to improve or whatever being aware of that means that okay ah, I feel this way I know it because I understand myself so to improve I need to do I need to step out a little bit to interact mm. or if on the opposite spectrum if you feel a bit more down than usual or is it because I'm overloaded with stimulation mm. uh, too many people are talking so I need now all I, now I need to go and hide again mm. so it's just an understanding of what to do in a very general sense of your alignment or mm-hmm. yes and then after that I think when you understand your stress profile as well it makes a lot of sense like mm. because within the Enneagram report you also look at in a way what is your trigger profile and mm. trigger profile gives very precious data like what is happening inside of you when you are ex- when you're exhibiting this kind of behavior and those kinds of conversations are usually um, my coach's favorite parts of the facilitation process because then I actually ask them to think of the last time they felt triggered in this way mm-hmm. and they will give real examples and then we will actually go deeper into so so what were the actual thoughts you were having when you were feeling this way and that's when you actually get to help rewrite some of their narratives that they had. So the next time they are triggered that way and they recognize these familiar thoughts coming up, these automatic negative thoughts, then you are able to give them an anchor. No, I can have another story to use as an anchor right now to just break me out of this state. And that can be a very reassuring thing for any human to have. Just to know that, ah, uh, this right now that's happening in my body, this is how I know I'm stressed. Mm. It sounds like it is very obvious. Don't people know when they're stressed? But it's actually very insidious. Mm. When you start maybe being extra defensive or when you start using louder voices or when you start being scattered and distracted, all of these are behaviours that people in stress will exhibit. But for different profile types, there will be different trigger profiles and different stress profiles. And just having this information is very empowering. Mm. It makes you feel like there is no shit that I'm going to go into unaccompanied. Like I know if something happens to me right now, I will be aware of it and I will know what can take me out. That in Mm. a way is just like a a manual, like how to be a human, right? It's how to get through life. So I find it, I find it really empowering. At least for me, I can speak for myself. Mm. Yeah, and I think if if we go to the next step of connection, this is like about self understanding, right? But when I connect with somebody else, it helps me to know and be open to what they value also. So my spouse is entirely different from me. Energy level totally different value system totally different so then just by knowing that i can understand that ah i understand why she would say something like that Mm. right now in this situation it's not that she's purposely making things difficult for me it's because my spouse values this and i value that and straight away takes the edge off Mm. interesting eh? it's so simple Mm. or rather it's not simple, it's complex, but breaking down into such a simple way of understanding that like ultimately it's just two different people, like nothing wrong about mm-hmm. her way of looking at things or your way of looking at things. It just is. And you can't fault that person for being who they are. Mm. So then there's no reason to be upset, mm. right? Because there's mm. nothing to be upset about ultimately. You make your own self angry, ma. Yes. Because of your lack of imagination of what's actually happening. You mm-hmm. think that this is happening, but again, there are so many factors out there that you don't understand. You think that that's happening based on your past experiences. Mm-hmm. So you associate this action with this result. But in reality, it's not true, ma, right? Mm-hmm. It's not true. And you get angry at, it, at your own mind playing tricks on you. You get angry at yourself. And then your own self. And again, anger is not directed to outwards. It's always directed inwards. What? Whenever Different you... types. True. Mm. If you're talking about, say, I feel angry, mm-hmm. that's always inwards. But anger can be, I punch you, la, then it's outwards. Right? Is that what you mean? Uh, no. But, but it's more of like, for 
so my style is inwards, mm. which means that if I'm angry, you don't even know. Ooh. Yeah. And that's really painful for yeah. me. Yeah. Painful for me and painful for the person because I withhold. Mm. And when I withhold anger, I think I'm doing people a favor, but what I'm really withholding is connection mm. and understanding. So you deny the connection both to yourself and to others. Exactly. Although that may not have been my intention, mm. but I do that. You know, so so then being aware of this reminds me that each time I feel an unsettling, I need to sit whoever down is with me and I need to say, hey, okay, you know, can we can we talk for a bit? I have a story in my head that I need to check with you. Mm. Oh, I like this. Mm. Yes, I like this. Yeah, so this... It is stories, eh? It's just stories that we create. Yeah, so if if I can give just, you know, for the people who are listening to this, if there's just one thing you want to take away, just take away this line. Being able to say this, you know, I have a story that I need to check with you. Or if you're uncomfortable using the word story, you can say, there's something that I'm experiencing right now and I'm not sure if it's what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Can I check it with you? Yeah, or there's something from my perspective that I'm seeing. So it's just having that humility in that moment to acknowledge that you know it's just your own experience and you don't assume it's the other person's experience. So you could be wrong. Mm-hmm. It essentially is saying that. And and giving the other person a chance to say, hey, no, I, I, I didn't intend that to be. And then poof, gone. Mm. Yeah, so I needed to learn how to do that because I was keeping it inward all the time. So that's inward non-expression. Mm. But outward will be people who are comfortable showing it through words, through action, anything. Basically, they dispel it outside. Mm. I'm angry or I throw something mm. or I slam a door or I you know, hit somebody. All these are all outward mm. expressions. So there are certain profile types that have direct communication, external expression. This is how they will express their anger. And there are certain types that will keep it inward in a variety of ways. So my number profile superpower is actually passive aggressiveness. Damn. How I deal with anger. I do it really... I I did it really well. You hurt yourself off? (laughs) Yeah, I did it really well. And and it would hurt the people around us. I mean, of course, it's hurtful to me, but... It's really painful to be ignored by somebody mm. who is being passive aggressive. And mm. the person who is doing it, let's say aka me, I will feel like I'm going to wait this out and I'm going to show that I'm the winner. Oh. How long I can go yeah, without yeah, talking yeah, to you. Yeah, and yeah. you know, there will be that personal pride like, you see, I can, you know, I mean, not talk to you for a really long yeah, time. Yeah. I've won. But wow, for the length of time that you are doing this, right, you are losing connection every day. Uh, two things when like when oh, when I was thinking of the inward and outward and I said that anger is always inwards it's always I meant it in a sense where it's always you are the one that feels the bulk of that pain I get what you mean when you say inwards and outwards it's um, for you you interpret it in a expressing mm. right sometimes you can express it inwards sometimes you express it outwards mm. but ultimately I feel that anger is still it's you like mm. the individual the one that's angry mm. the most because even if you keep it to yourself you suffer mm. if you if you uh, score people or you slam the ball and all that mm. you are still also denying yourself connection ultimately because yes. people are like well fuck that. I don't, I don't want to be around you because yeah. you, you can't control yourself mm. and second thing also what you said reminds me of like how you know when you're young Something happens, you're angry at your mom or whatever, then you, okay, xiao qi, you go into your room, you don't mm. want to talk to anybody, you mm. hide there, right? How, how long can I not talk to you? <laughs> Close the door, la, your mother knocked on your door, hey, come out and eat, you don't want to, you don't mm. reply. Because I want, because you've angered me, so I want to anger you, but I can't, mm. I can't I, I, it's not in me to slap or punch or throw table, so I, silent treatment, right? Mm. To make you suffer, but ultimately I'm suffering. Mm. And then they're out there having dinner, I'm hungry, I'm in my room, I'm trying to, st- I'm trying to stand my ground right I'm standing my ground I don't want to eat I don't want to fucking talk to you I don't want to be around you mm. but I'm suffering I'm hungry in my room I can't do anything in my room back then no internet no phone I'm just sitting there and oh, wasting gosh. time uh, and just creating that story yeah. oh, they're the ones that are making me hungry yeah. they're the ones that are making me suffer but ultimately everybody's trying to help you like hey come on and eat mm. this is like you know just talk about it but I don't want my because mm. I'm my ego or whatever and then when you think about, of course, like your your child back then, you don't know how to respond to the world. Yeah. So you react in a way. Um, sure, it'd be great if someone told me 
at that age, bro. So how would you even understand at that age? Mm. You know, you really need your parents to be such yeah. great communicators, which they're not. They're just people. Yeah. We're all just people. Wow. We're all just live, trying to survive, do our best. So of course you don't blame them. As you know, again, as an adult, I think back, I don't blame them. Mm. They did their best. It's so. Again, once you understand all this, it's nothing personal. It's yes. just people are just people. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, your mom is not hurting you, mm. and even if she is, so like, uh, I mean, it's someone hurt her. Someone hurt her. You know, yeah. like it's just it is what it is. Mm. Yeah. And and that's where compassion comes in. Just that understanding that people are doing the best they can with what they have, mm. and that any emotion that I have in a way is experienced by my body. I think what you mentioned about is true and it's not just for anger. It's essentially all the emotions that we feel, right? We will feel them. Mm. We are the only ones who feel them. Mm. And that's why I really want to share this message and I want to impress upon people this message that when you have compassion, it is for yourself. Mm. Do not have that idea that when I show compassion, I'm benefiting the other person. It's not you are sort of showing it so that you don't hold these anger, you don't hold these emotions in your body. I When I show compassion, I, I do it very naturally because my profile type also allows me to be very non-judgmental. So people sometimes ask me, you know, don't you think you can afford to be less kind so that other people don't walk all over you? Or do you always have to see the, the best in everyone? And and I understand their positive intention there for in terms of their concern for it's my well-being. It's naive, you think? Don't you think it's naive to think that way? Or why you don't just see the good in people? Mm. No, as in, they think I'm naive. Ah, yes. Mm-mm. Because Because if, let's say, I naturally see the good in everyone, mm. they will think... I am being naive and that I do not understand the ways of the world that people mm. have bad intentions. And I am I am I am conceptually aware of that I would say, but I see compassion as my choice for the lenses that I want to have. Right. To regulate my own emotion house. Because yeah. ultimately you can't control what's happening around you, but you can yeah. tr- you can control your reaction to the things that happen to you. Yeah. If someone bumps into you, you can't control that, but mm-hmm. you can control how you react to that. So yes. everything that you regulate, the compassion that you have, the kindness that you show, is not towards that person. It's okay, I'll, I'll forgive you. Mm. Yes, forgive. Because by forgiving that person, you forgive that, you let that part of that anger release. Ma. Mm. And it's very easy to forget. You just for, it's, very, it's, it's very easy to forgive. You just forgive. You just do it. It's hard because we don't want to. We want to, I, I, like you've hurt me. I'm mm-hmm. not going to let you get away with that. I want mm-hmm. you to suffer also. Then it perpetuates, Ma. It perpetuates. Mm-hmm. You hold on to the anger. So the next time I see you, I'm going to punch you. Mm-hmm. You hold on to that. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Imagine holding on to something like that uh, for years. Mm-hmm. And then 10 years later, you finally come at the person. Ha ha. Now I'm here and I'm going to punch you. <laughs> Think of how foolish that sounds, right? Yeah. If you 10 years later come back and like if someone comes back to me and says, okay, Aaron, I finally met you again. I'm about to take revenge on you. I would think like, wow, you have spent 10 yeah. years holding on to this. And I have spent 10 years forgetting about it because I don't like, mm. this means nothing to me over mm. that time I bumped into you. I've let that go the moment it happened. Yes. But you've held on to this for 10 years and you finally come back and you want to bump to me Correct. so that you feel good about it. That's so foolish you know mm. and that's this this is on you you know i i had that point already i the the one that initially wronged you mm-hmm. now everything else you've wronged yourself already ma right. entirely true like like and i think and i think so this really just drives home the the fact that compassion is for yourself mm. it's for your own functioning in life and being a human and the thing is that I do think that people know this on some level. It's just that it's hard for them to suddenly... Okay, if I'm angry now, the biggest question I get is that, you know, I have so much anger. How do I just forget? I can't forget. I can't suddenly just turn it off. So I don't I don't use the language of like, you know, let go of your anger. Because it can be a very hard concept to implement. So what I... What I do with my, you know, with, with my coaches is that when you feel anger, just feel it. Mm. 
and just tell yourself, say it, acknowledge it that this is anger that I'm feeling and try to understand why you're feeling this anger. And when you do that, you get to what is really making you upset. And the aim of this is so that you can transform the anger rather than make the anger disappear. Because making your emotions disappear is impossible. It's It's really hard. So it's about transforming it. When you transform it, it goes to grief and grief goes to love. And then you, you transform it very naturally because all kinds of anger is because of something you're grieving about. Mm. If you can identify that, then when you know what you're grieving about, you know what you love. Mm. And when you transform that to love, you will be able to see the best in someone else as well. So allow your feelings to transform. Mm. Don't just think that you have to let them go. And the worst way is to tell yourself like, I need to forget this anger. That, that's the hardest thing. Mm. Yeah. Or I need to forget my rage. Or I need to forgive right now. I want to forgive and forget right now my ex and everything that they did to hurt me. Telling yourself that actually just makes it harder for you to let go mm. because it's sort of like you have highlighted that as the aim. Don't think of the pink elephant though. Yes, correct. I always use mm. that as well. Don't put that as the subject in your brain. Mm. Think about it like I want to choose myself and I want to love myself. Let's carry myself through this. Mm. And I always think that you you will become the person you need. Mm. So just be as if, you know, behave as if you're already that person and that's how you will become the person that supports you through this. And I think that that is, that is the most realistic way I can give, I mean, that I can use to advise somebody to transform their informations rather than to let it go because emotions are all energy in our body as well. I was about to get to that. Yeah. Energy, uh, emotions, love, anger, everything of that nature is essentially energy it's Mm. energetic you feel it you can't see it but you feel it Mm. so you know it's there even though you can't prove that it's there Mm. but you know it's there and energy is at its core all the same maybe higher frequency maybe lower frequency maybe anger is like and maybe Mm. love is a bit more gentle and flowy but essentially it's the same thing Mm. and if it's the same thing you're able to alchemize it transmute it into Mm. something else Anger, sadness, love, hate, essentially same thing. Two sides of the same coin. Happiness, sadness. You can. Why is it when you are in pain you cry? Why is it when you're very happy and you laugh you also cry? Mm. Same thing. You feel the same intense love for someone, you can feel the same intense hate for someone. Mm. Same thing. So it is essentially the same thing. It's how you transform it. Someone pisses you off. You can take the anger, you can go and punch the wall and you hurt yourself. Or you can channel the energy, you go to the gym, you run. Bum, 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 and you feel good because the energy has been released mm. or transformed into strength or mm. in, it's been dissipated or transformed because you use that force that energy and you expand it mm. versus I'm sad I'm angry and I store it I keep 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 because there's no outlet to to release it and energy when you store it it has to go somewhere it has to bounce out right you can't mm. just it, it's stored energy if you don't release it somewhere or you release it in a bad way you punch someone yes it's released you feel better but like you've 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 used you've done a bad thing right or if you keep it keep it keep, keep it just decays in you and it rots within you and then somehow it affects you also ma. You, you're depressed you're sien or you feel mm. like you know you're just troubled by that weight of it that's why sometimes the best way to feel good is just go for a run go outside take a walk mm. right because movement is also healing ma. Mm. It's just a matter of understanding like all these are just energies and how you manipulate that energy. Mm. How is it that the same thing can happen to two different people but one person can overcome it but the other person can't? Same thing, ma. It's a situation, what? Mm. So it's not about the situation at all. It's about who you are and how you deal with that thing, ma. Mm. How is it that, uh, say, an abusive family, two kids, one became the abuser, one became the, the, the hero, one became the villain, mm. right? It's just how you interpreted it at the time. So it's never about the situation. It's about mm. how you deal with it. And how you and if you understand that say, all this is just energy, nothing personal. Mm. Just do what you need to do to manage that flow of energy. Because then you have you have the ability to do that. Mm. You have no ability to change. You can't force someone to for, uh, say sorry. Mm. But I can take whatever that has happened to me and do something about it through my own inner work law mm. right 
because that's my responsibility at the time. Mm. And, and I think that's why, you know, there is this there is this understanding that it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you, you see, it. how you interpret it, how you react to it matters to you. So in that sense, the worst thing that can happen to you is an emotion. That's yeah. all. The emotion e- that you feel. And emotions are not real. <laughs> wow. Emotions that, are not real. That's, that's going to be a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, right? You feel it. You feel it mm-hmm. and you think it's so real because you, wow, this amount of sadness, this amount of happiness, you feel it. Mm. But ultimately, it's not real because it's just your mind. Mm. I, I want to give like, you know, words to that because I think this is an important and and it can essentially be very empowering for people who are listening to your podcast because when I think when we say emotions aren't real, in a way we're saying that they are based off something. And it's not that they are the absolute truth in that moment. They can feel very real for the people feeling it. But essentially, emotions come from our thoughts. Mm. And that's why managing our thoughts is very important. Because you create your thoughts. Mm. You tell yourself how to feel. Correct. And these are what we talked about when we say our stories. Mm. So when we create certain stories, then that's when we spark that emotion. See, So let's say if I have this story that, wow, my husband let's say doesn't care about me and always leaves all the chores for me to do you know he's so lazy so okay this story these mm. are the thoughts then straight away the emotion you feel will be anger mm. yeah but if you have a different thought like hey my spouse doesn't seem to be supporting me in this like is there something else that he's worried about or maybe he is too stressed or he is you know not able to notice me having a hard time mm. then my emotion can be curiosity mm. And then I can go with this confusion or curiosity and I can have a conversation that's a bit more open. It's not only just, say, changing the, the thoughts, the thoughts mm. but it's also sometimes where we, we have to, or rather we don't want to admit how much we love being sad or how much we love being angry. Mm. You know what I mean? Because if you truly didn't like a situation, if you were really suffering, you would do something about it. But if you gave yourself like an uh, an excuse of like, I don't want to do this because I'm sad. I'm too sad to go for a run. I'm too sad to change anything. Essentially, you like being sad. You like moping around. You like, say, the attention that it gives you. Or you like just being a victim. And this that's, is, <laughs> that's this a is. very tough thing to admit to yourself. Because if you think about it, really, you have the power to do anything. You mm. have the ability to change everything yes there are certain situations you're stuck maybe financially or you're obligated to do some things but that's external mm. internally you can do whatever you want you can create anything in your mind palace what because mm. your reality is your thoughts right and if i can create my thoughts like we just established then you can create your universe essentially whatever mm. that's outside it's like a whole f- what's that guy's name the, the guy who wrote the book uh, holocaust guy victor franco mm. It's it's really like 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 that where he is in that situation, mm-hmm. but he can come he can come out of it because he has such a strong mind, his such strong understanding of himself, his thoughts, and the, his understanding of the world. Some of it might be illusions. All of it, essentially, is. Mm-hmm. But if everything is unreal, then you have the power to create your own truth, ma. So then the truth isn't like yes, there is fundamental truths, universal truths. There is a table here. You are you are you I me we are in this room. These are all truths. It's real, but then, say I I sidetrack for a bit. Say when I do my tattoo, right? Mm. It's painful. Ouch! It hurts. That's the truth. I feel that pain. I see it happening. It's it's real to me. Mm. And then afterwards, he puts the numbing cream, and then I feel nothing. Mm. Is this pain real? Is it even happening? Right? Because mm. if it's a simple yet I go and think so much like about this concept of like so what is real if I if if you know is it just the connection of the nerves in my mind that tells me oh it's pain so if he numbs it the things still touch there is still uh, damage being done but I don't mm. feel that pain so so what's real right now you know mm. so it's all my mind la. is it is, mm. is it all in my mind so then Everything is all in my mind. What? Every experience that I have is how I interpret it because of my own past experiences. If I'm able to change that or create the life that I want, create the, the thoughts that I want, I reopen up all my neural pathways and I re, re, uh, 
like it's like the samskaras are you you mm. forge your, a new mm. path mm. instead of this being this now this means this mm. so then everything changes your whole change your whole world changes you change already right? mm. what what you're essentially talking about here is where you rewrite your narratives you rewrite your stories and you reassociate them the to words different that you things. tell yourself very mm. important I learned mm. that from a friend like everything that you say from like oh I can't do this I'm so lazy mm. reframe it to like I'm not strong enough to do this so I should just get stronger or something like that like, you know just change the way be smart about it just reframe mm. the way that you talk to yourself mm. I, I mean I, I've spoke I've spoken about this before mm. on my on my channel as well and the thing is that it's about not applying it to your character but to keep this as a trait so what this means is that it means I don't say I'm lazy you can say that I seem to value comfort more than hard work so it is a trait and what this does is that when you speak about it in traits you are giving yourself the opportunity to still develop in that trait and you are saying that it's not a permanent part of me but when you say I'm lazy you're defining yourself as a person or let's say you say I've I'm lost. But you can say I'm still finding my way. Mm. And it's about rewriting this into actions, actionable, so that you know it depends on your actions. But I want to pick up on something you said just now where you were saying like, you know, uh, people like feeling sad. You yes. know, maybe people like feeling sad, feel angry. It's not this way for everyone. But if this is the, your reality that you are reflecting, then I can see what you value. And I can, you know, I can profile you in terms of your anagram number, I'm pretty sure mm. there is this number in you, mm. let's say. But there will be people who actually do not have a lot of contact with their feelings. And that's because of the different things that they value. So certain anagram profile types, they are not very emotionally aware. Mm. So then they won't do it because they like feeling this way, but they will have their own reasons for feeling stuck mm. because there are certain needs that are not being met. So just being aware of this also, we'll know that every... I mean, we'll just give you the understanding that everybody's experience is so different mm. that you essentially really know nothing about someone until you have the humility to ask mm. and to just ask for directions. Like, to not assume that I can give the best advice for you. And that's what sometimes people get traumatized by in our society today when people give advice that is not asked for. Because people sometimes give advice, and this can be sometimes from the older generation, mm. because they want to look out for you, they want yeah. to make your way easier. They tell you, hey, you should insert whatever narrative. Mm. And a lot of people sometimes get troubled by this, and they get really affected, because if the advice doesn't speak to them, they feel really disconnected from yeah, the person. Yeah, there's more weight to it also. Mm. So it's more of like, when you don't know how you to support a loved one, mm always just ask mm. I think that's one advice that I always give to the people who work with me just ask and the way you can ask is just what does support for me look like today mm. Mm. like hey I can see or it looks to me like you're having a hard time what does support for me look like so then if somebody asks me this question I can just say you know can you just hug me and not ask anything yeah so my spouse doesn't have a habit of asking questions like that to me. So I have directed her like through times and she also directs me because we have different ways that we like to be comforted. And yes, I mean, people might say that this is, oh, this is like the love languages, but I think it's more than that because the love language is a great system. I mean, it, it has highlighted five ways, but essentially to connect with somebody, you should understand that there are many more love languages. It's not just five. And any way that you are giving as support to somebody else, that is a love language. Sometimes love language can be holding space, mm. saying nothing, giving silence. All of these things are also love languages. But I have needed to develop the habit to tell my loved ones how they can support me. And that, in turn, makes them feel more empowered. And it makes them feel like they're connecting to me more. And that's how you build connection in a relationship. So it's, all, but it, so it's also like... All understanding yourself to be able to instruct yes. others ma, which yes. which we go back to this la, right yes. the tools that we need hmm. okay and and you'd be surprised some people sometimes don't even know how to express what they're feeling mm. 
So I've had to work with adults using the emotion wheel as well. Are you happy <laughs> or angry? Or... Yeah. That and, is and, true. And it's just because they may not have grown up in an environment where yeah, they had adults modeling that, uh, the yeah. language or where they had chance to use that language. So they just know how to behave. Mm. They're, they just know how to associate behavior with an emotion, but they don't know how to associate language to the emotion. Mm-hmm. And that that sometimes is the first step that I need to work with with couples so that they can at least communicate on the same platform with the same language. Mm. Mm. So much work to understand a human, mm. but it's so rewarding. I feel like all this is very all this is very interesting. I enjoy the conversations that I have with the people that I have on here, mm-hmm. and I learn a lot about myself through others' experiences, and it's always enjoyable. And then through my own experiences outside, also like you, 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 ultimately everything is an attempt to connect, and if that attempt fails you reflect about upon it did it is it did i do something wrong did that person wasn't uh open during that time uh it can be something like a relationship it can be something just passing like this this friend or Mm. or just because you interact with people on a daily basis what so you 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 notice certain things i feel like i'm good at expressing uh, certain thoughts and feelings I feel that I'm able to connect with people easily but yet also there are times when I don't feel like I'm like that so it's a constant like you know learning experience mm-hmm. when I found out about the Enneagram thing uh, you know that it did give me a bit more perspective about myself but I still don't really understand it maybe I'll ask you about it later mm-hmm. but f- from hearing you share about your experiences with the people that you are helping or say me and talking about it interesting eh? it's 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 a tool that allows you to connect better with people as simple as that yes and and it sounds like it is it sounds like it doesn't feel like much you know when you say it's a tool to connect because most people on a daily basis they will think that they can connect already mm. because they see communication and connection on a very technical functional level hey my wife understand what well, when i say do this she does it so what's the problem my life is going okay mm. and that is the biggest i think um, that's the biggest gap in understanding what connection can really be like because it's not just on a technical level the layers are... yeah and and which is why, even though a lot of the work I do, it goes back to communication as skills, I don't identify as a communication coach because mm. I don't just teach people. I mean, I'm not interested in just teaching people how to speak well mm. or things like that. I want them to speak so that they can connect. Mm. And that is a different kind of skill. Yeah. It's not about, oh, how you pitch your voice, yeah, how yeah, you yeah. pronounce your vowels. It's not really that. It's more of like, do you know how to listen to what is important in your partner? Do you right. know what to say to invite those kinds of essential responses? Do you know how to speak to calm your partner in conflict? So when couples come to work with me, these are the words that I actually give them. I have like, you know, scripts with, not full scripts, but just scripts with lines on what are the lines they can use for each other when they are in conflict. And that mm-hmm. can be empowering because then it can allow you to check yourself and sort of just give yourself a reminder okay i remember there was something i was supposed to say to calm my partner down what was that just to have that moment to just recollect and be aware again for example i'll give you a technical example so that you can visualize the type one profile in the enneagram is seen as a perfectionist so they will care about being right and it 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 matters to them to have high standards to be correct all the time so one of the most hurtful things you can say to a type 1 profile in conflict is to say you're wrong. Mm. So knowing this, knowing what not to say that can hurt your partner on a fundamental level is very empowering. Mm. And let's say if I look at another type, let's say, you know, type 4, they value feelings, authenticity, connection. And if you tell them like, your feelings are nonsense, bullshit, I don't care what your feelings, just tell me what to do that can make the type 4 profile feel very unheard and unseen that Mm. somebody is not interested in their feelings 
or like just say, why should I care about your feelings? You're the same as everybody else. They will all just feel the same thing. There's no need for me to find out what you feel. So things like that, these are things that you can hurt. You can say to hurt each other a lot. And mm. likewise, there'll be things that you can say to Help soothe. soothe. Yeah. yeah. So rather than tell the type one you're wrong, if you really have that criticism, give it to them in another way. Wrap mm. it up and say like, hey, I know you put a lot of effort into ensuring this is the best, but can I give you some truth about how it was for me? Mm. Very different from you are wrong, you thought it's the best, but it sucked. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that's just... Very tactful words. Mm. Huh? Interesting. Okay. What is, what is number eight? Number eight is the challenger. Can you tell me more? Yeah, so type eight profile is somebody who cares and values about strength, um, justice. They will, they will value having power and having that ability to protect somebody that they think who is weaker than them. So that gives them that strength to fight for what they think is right. Mm. And so in doing so, they value honesty, direct communication, because they believe that these are the tools that allows them to protect and hold justice in the most efficient manner. So they're action-oriented. They won't have a problem speaking their mind. Mm. And as a result, they may sometimes be perceived as very straight-talking people who may not care about the feelings of those that they have hurt, which is not true. Because if you look at their positive intention, it is actually to protect those who are weaker than them. So that's why they value having a position of strength because they believe that this is from where they can protect best. Mm. Mm. So eloquently put. Thank you. Okay. My, my, my dear family, there are two. <laughs> I know one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah okay yeah and so that's the thing also like when you see when you really understand the Enneagram what I have come to appreciate about it is that you can see what they really value but you can also understand how people will perceive them and that is how you coach them mm. best so like it's sort of telling them that hey this is your intention but I want to tell you that this is how people might perceive you so here is how we can close that gap and mm. that is that is like an instruction manual for every person. Interesting. Mm. Are the eights man and your dad? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure she wanted it to share here, but... but yeah. Well, too late. <laughs> but okay. I, I, I love them for it. Mm. Because um, as, as, a, as somebody who has a profile nine, mm. it means that I do not have sometimes that same strength and energy and power. And I may not be as action-oriented. Mm. So I find that I like being around people with this energy because then I admire them and I learn from them, Mm. these aspects. Because I have a lot of thoughts inside and they, in a way, show me or give me the environment where I can be encouraged to do the same also because I see them doing it. Yeah, It took me a long time to learn though. Like I didn't do it until, like I said recently, Mm. when I thought that, oh, okay, sharing my feelings can be good too. But essentially, I... I am drawn to their strength. I like their strength. And and I can see, but the, but the thing about the eight is that they actually are very soft inside. Mm. Yeah, they're really soft inside. And because in a way, what they value when they want to protect somebody who's weaker, it already shows that they have a heart to sympathize mm. with. And it's easy to get to their heart in a way to like make them feel for a cause that they want to protect. So they actually have very soft centers and they are very loyal people like Mm. once you are their tribe they really protect you they go with you all the way and these are such these are such chivalrous values in a way they are such like you know brave values so that's why the eight in in being called a challenger seems like they oppose everything but it's not that it's because like when good people do work and they want to protect there's always going to be something that Mm. they have to go against and the challenger is sort of honoring that intention in these people saying that these are the ones who will be brave enough to challenge Mm. so that's that's a really positive value and every number has something like that like you you were saying like every number is positive but yeah and also in that positive it's 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 two sides it's two two double-edged sword because 
say uh, the challenger is very direct, but in that in that directness, you can you can on a positive side, okay, you're being honest. On a negative side, oh, you're being so forward. Then say the solitude one, the number four, right? You're number four. Uh, uh, great that you're able to be so independent. Alternatively, hey, how come you you don't wanna like open mm. up to us? And every number seems to have a positive and a negative of each of them. Mm. The perfectionist, yeah, great. Everything that you do is on point, but also like, at what point, like, are you gonna keep refining something like it diminishing returns? Right. Mm. So everything has a positive and a negative. I I get I get what you're saying. We like, in that sense, I think the language that we use more in a way, and there probably you know that that there are so many reasons we can go into it for this, but essentially we we say that this is the strength of each number is also their weakness in a way. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's more of like something that is your superpower can also become a paradox because essentially what you are very good at your superpower is you're very natural at doing this, but chances are if you obsess over it and you mm. overdo it then that's when this same superpower becomes, becomes your weakness your, yeah. yeah and and it's it's less of like this is a positive trait or a negative trait but we look at it as this is your intention but it may not be the impression you give and so then that is not really associating it with the trait it's understanding that there is behavior sometimes that we present and exhibit that is not aligned with our intention and to help us become more aware of it. Okay, remember what your positive intention is now. Align your actions to that so that you have less of a gap between your intention and your impression. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. Because you... It's a communication thing or so, right? Like, it is. Like, my intention is this, Mm. but I'm unable to communicate it or my ego gets in the way. Mm. Then I... I made one whole round, you yes. know, I beat around the bush, or I'm not trying to say what I mean, or I say it in a very, unself, like, not a self-serving way. Yes. And and there are there is a very easy way around this. Just always front with your intention. If you learn how to do that, if you learn at least how to observe what your mm-hmm. intention is, and you always front it that way, that is one very non-sophisticated yeah. general easy way to just make sure that that person sits with your intention first and uses that to frame yeah. whatever you're going to say after so it can just be Aaron right. what I plan to say may not come out the way I want it to but I just want you to know that today my intention is to connect with you mm. and to be curious about you so I just wanted to let you to know that mm. so when you say something like that then that person already just receives the intention then everything else that you say after that, even if it's not artful, if it's not tactful, he has the right context to yes. accept it, lah. Correct. Oh, I like this. Mm. So anybody who who you know who is wondering about how do I speak intentionally, just just do that. Just take a moment to observe yourself. The only thing that you need to do here is to observe yourself, and then just let the other person know. You can just say, you know, I'm feeling a bit nervous, but I want to do a good job. So I just wanted to let you to know that. Mm. I just wanted you to know that. So that. That can be something that give that gives people already ease of mind. Yes, mm. and I think also this kind of thing, being vulnerable, right? Mm. Like saying what you want and saying what you need, mm. and and seeking that understanding from someone else. If you reveal yourself in that way to someone who will take that information and use it against you, that's also. Um, Mm. Like say, if you like say, uh, if you say, okay, I am the whatever number, and because of my number, I require this, and this this makes me upset. Mm. Someone else can take that. Oh, it makes you upset, is it? I'm gonna press press you a little bit more. <laughs> so I, I like, is mm. this something that you can? I I would rather. This is something for more that you share with more intimate people right you the don't... ground rule is that you can always choose who to give your directions to true mm, that's true. the ground rule like the ground rule is that for me for me specifically the ground rule that I give myself is that yes my work is in human connection yeah. and I know how to connect to people but I can choose who I want to connect to yes I, I, I don't need to tell myself that hey you know as a human connector shouldn't you connect with everyone but no, that's, that won't that's be honouring of myself. And yeah. even though I do this work, there are people that I choose not to connect with because then I 
believe that when I connect with them, sometimes it may be less honoring of myself. So mm. I can choose my own safety boundaries. Mm. And boundaries, these people yeah. can also do that as well. You can choose who to give your directions to. Directions are an intimate thing. Mm. Yeah, just because you know them doesn't mean I need to tell everybody, hey, you know, how you make me feel better or how you can comfort, comfort me is to do this. I, I can withhold mm. until I want to build a connection. Mm. Yeah. It's just about giving people these tools to use so that they can use it when they want to. Mm. Mm. I see. There is a lot of safety in human connection as well. Mm. Safety, that's a nice... That's a nice... Um, description and also like I never... Ah, interesting mm. way of describing connection because you would think that like say oh I enjoy connection like say everybody enjoys connection it's more of like just being with someone but also it does have that sense of safety mm. psychological safety mm. allows I think uh, I mean it allows vulnerability to mm. show up and then that's when you get the deepest connection but if you're not ready for that level of vulnerability mm. and you feel forced like somebody is you know Tell me what's giving wrong. vulnerability or seeking or demanding vulnerability before You're there is safety receive, yeah. then connection can't be formed then right yeah. it's like someone like emotionally like dumping yeah. or revealing too yeah. much yeah, yeah. 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 it like, can oh, be shit. both ways so yeah. that means they give you too much oh, or they're they asking enough, too much yeah. yeah so then if they ask too much and everything so essentially when you don't feel safe that mm. is your body's reaction to your boundaries being mm. crossed and so if you're aware of when your body feels threatened, then let that be an awareness for yourself that, okay, I think a boundary that I had or that I didn't know I had mm. has been breached. So then I need to know where my boundaries are. And mm. and in a way, even if you don't know where they are, when you don't feel safe, just back off. Mm. Yeah. So safety is very important in connection because connection takes place with safety you see without safety yeah. what there is there isn't connection it can be a whole lot of things it can be codependency it can be yeah. abuse it can be um, just obligations and all these they may say they are connection but they're not mm. then that's how people get you know traumatized in relationships and mm. things like that safety is always the first foundation mm. <sighs> But it's such a new and it's it's a new concept I think especially in Asian culture because we he, we have very contradictory lessons like we sort of see it as bonding with the elders you know elders can ask you whatever questions they want and everything these are things that you're supposed to answer or you're supposed to do because you know it's respectful and things mm-hmm. like that so the Asian culture of sometimes respect and of in the spirit of community building and in spirit of kampong you know kampong spirit sometimes yeah sometimes it it sort of forces you to abandon any boundaries that you might have Mm. so that's why in the newer i mean in the younger culture where they are more familiar with narratives regarding boundaries personal safety then they start to sometimes you know push against these obligations Mm. and traditions why do you why do i have to answer when you ask me when i'm going to have a baby things like that yeah so these are things that um i i i think it's a sort of a A tool for the modern world uh, correct and i mean it's not to say that the older generation shouldn't learn it, but it's more it's it's more about our understanding that they may not have the access, they may not have had the access to this information. Mm. And again, it is not their intention to cross your boundary. Mm. They, just, this was just their way of connection last time. Right. Mm. Yeah. I get like, oh, like when are you getting married? When are you having a kid? Mm-hmm. It can be just uh, something to ask your your nephew maybe yeah. or it's genuinely like are you gonna be okay is there someone that can take care of you you know mm. it's still of good intention mm, but mm. annoying to answer la, I get mm. it um my this is how my long have we been three wow 150 one hour 50 minutes mm, really. mm. this is mine 8 is the num- the biggest and then I can't tell if it's 5 or 1 that's next. Mm. 
I would hold this lightly. I would hold this lightly because I actually feel like you have a different dominant profile. This is quite type. long. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I feel like you value authenticity a lot and mm. I feel like you value uniqueness and you enjoy connection, like deep connection in understanding your purpose in this world, how mm. people in the world are connected. And you have... I think a, a wide capacity for emotions, feeling it, being aware even when you're feeling like difficult emotions and you like looking for artistic ways to express yourself. Mm. And I think this aligns with a profile type 4. So mm. I, I feel that in you. Yeah, I mean, but, what you said mm. makes sense. I can relate to that. But I've done like maybe three of them. Mm. All of them either are eight or one of them was nine. Mm. But I don't see myself as the nine. Mm. Because there are going to be three numbers, right? Mm. It's likely that eight one will be them. one of them. Mm. Mm. Okay. But because when we... Now, well, now essentially what I'm doing is like manual profiling. Like yeah. I read the things you say, the words and the values that matter to you, and also the way of being, like how you mm. be mm. In, in terms of your presence. And usually, usually type 8 profiles um, they belong to the to the basket of numbers that are very external energy so they can look more fiery they can look more active in a way mm, at least from how I experience you right now you mean, feel yeah. a lot more grounded that's what and, that's what a lot of people have tell me mm, also. so that sometimes can give um, can give some nuance to a profiling process like I will use this data together with the words that you mm. say and so then when I combine them I would say your dominant probably might not be an 8 I feel more of a 4 but then it doesn't matter what I mm. think because Enneagram is still a self honouring kind of profile, mm. we trust the human most, mm. you will know yourself best, so what numbers in a way you resound with most that is your reading yep. and I can't tell you that you are a this number or your that but I can help you make sense of what the values mean and then you can tell me which ones connect with you yeah I mean so far like the when I asked about the 8 and when you're telling me about the 4 mm. all all relevant mm. I feel like it make, makes sense to me time check mm. yep. it's 3.50 so I mean have you gotten what you wanted is there enough <laughs> content you have is there something else you wanted to talk about no, I mean, like, I came here with a few questions that were already answered in the first five minutes already. So I like, okay, never that's mind. That's great, that's great. That's why I, I was a bit, I paused for a bit at the start trying to, like, keep things mm. going. But, like, it worked out in the end. Mm. I um, think we had quite free-flowing conversation. Quite free-flowing. I feel yeah. like it's always hard. The first few moments is always very difficult to get things going, whether it's just awkward to have this here, mm. or maybe we don't really have much rapport. Mm. But... Just talk, oh, just talk. Just mm. Eventually, well, things we're, like we're just connecting naturally. It's not gonna always be smooth. Like you take the effort. We're both here. Mm. I want to know you. You want to know me. You have things to share that I want to know. Mm. And then slowly, slowly talk about all of my thing. Oh, it's it's fun. I found it really easy, actually. Yeah. Yeah, like like I, I will tell you that I I felt it was very smooth from how you facilitated. So you don't have to I, worry about that. I've done this a few times, so at of least course. I feel like I am a bit more experienced. But also, you are in your own space, which helps. That's mm. why I like to go to people's house, mm. or if I go to if they go to my house, I try and make it a bit more like, you know, comfortable. And this kind of thing like must have mood, Anna, You know, <laughs> if you're angry or if you see and today or what, I, yeah. and like I'll tell, I'll say like yeah, we do another day. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's very natural. Mm. Thank you for finding your way here, making your way here. Mm. Thanks for inviting me into your space. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing this with me. Uh, It's been great. Mm. If someone wants to find out more about Mm. what you do, or if they want to just learn more about you, how can they do so? Mm, I'm on Instagram mostly. So I'm on Instagram as what Maisie said. And that is basically a reference to because how much I do speaking Mm. yeah so on what Maisie said um, I have my links to my coaching offerings 
when I host events, I also put it there. And that was how I recently held a fight right workshop for people to sign up. So my workshops or how you can work with me individually or as a couple, they're all there um, on my Instagram account. I will also link my website soon, but my website is not uh, finalized yet, so it won't be anything. Um, other than that, for free resources, because I like to make help accessible for free resources on my Instagram channel, I occasionally put up reels on how you can communicate, how you can choose kindness, how you can rewrite stories for yourself. And every Friday, I run um, I run a Not Gonna Lie segment on basically... It's called The Good Word Pharmacy. So every Friday on Instagram, in my stories, I will give a link for people to submit anonymously their questions, things that they just want to share. And I write a response and share it um, for yeah, every reading, single one. I was mm. reading a bunch. There were, there's a lot of them. Uh. It's close to, we're working towards a thousand already. A thousand wow. responses. I started since last year and I didn't expect it to take off this way. Mm. But basically every Friday, I will always have questions on things people want to celebrate, things people want to just be comforted for. And I just want the Go Up Pharmacy to be a space mm. for people to just air. So every Friday, if you have something on your mind, you can just come by and share it. Mm. When your website is up, whether it's... Oh yeah, month, it okay, will be maisychong.com. Yeah. Okay. It'll just be my name, yeah. <laughs> maisychong.com is very easy. <laughs> yeah, I'll link it when, when it's up. Long. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, it was lovely speaking to you. Likewise. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. I hope you don't have too much editing to do. Smooth, smooth stuff. Hello again. Thank you for listening to the end, for making it this far. Uh, I hope you managed to learn a few things and perhaps even think of exploring more of about any enneagrams for yourself. If you like to maybe learn a, a little bit more. Uh, or if you'd like to just connect with Maisie, feel free to drop her a DM on Instagram. You can, uh, uh, the links are in the description thing below. So you can just take a look, click on it, tell her, you know, just say hi. Uh, if you like what you hear, share it with your friends, repost it on IG, tag me, tag, tag the the mostly yoga podcast uh, thing <laughs> and I'll repost it as well um, you can also can uh, you can also well I haven't done this in a long time let me uh, what am I supposed to say you can also support the podcast by donating to the coffee page yes uh, all again all the links are in the description below let me know if you have any questions if you want to reach out to me if you want to just say hi uh yeah, I'll say hi back. And then, uh, I think that's about it. As always, uh, I have another episode that I again recorded a couple of months ago. I haven't, haven't had the time to pop it out. I'll do so soon. So stay tuned for that. I uh, hope you're having a great day. Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Uh, great, was the great. Hope you're having a great week. Whew.